You're looking at my new pack. I just got this a couple of days ago. It's a Duluth Rambler. So I can rake up some leaves. Hey everybody, my name's John and welcome to my channel. I'm ground camping on this trip. So stay with me and we'll get started. I'm on the Blue Trail, traveling north. I came in from the Peavine Falls area. I'm going over to Camp 3. This is probably about a three and a half mile hike over there. Something like that. It's not too far. This trail is pretty flat all the way. There's not much climbing when you come in from the Peavine Falls side, going back north on the Blue Trail. But if you go down to the North Trailhead and come back this way south, you have to do a little bit of climbing. That's the way I normally go. I like to switch it up every once in a while. So I'm coming in from this side today. Plus I got a heavier pack that makes it easier. The low is supposed to get down and maybe the close to freezing around that temperature area. So I had to bring a little bit of extra gear. I like this blue trail. It's one of my favorite trails out here. Actually, it is my favorite trail. It's just more scenic. I like the woods this time of year. I've got my alcohol stove fired up. I'm getting some coffee water boiling. It's time for lunch. Actually, it's past time. I'm a little late getting into camp. This will be my kitchen for the next two days. I'm just gonna cook everything on this alcohol stove. i just pull my coffee off. I'm ready to get some of that. Got my soup water going. This cook set is a Pathfinder cook set. You've seen it on my previous videos. I'm doing something a little different on this camp trip. I'm gonna sleep on the ground. I need to practice my skills. That's the Warbonnet Superfly Tarp. That's the one you've seen with my hammock system. But I just got it set up like a tent. This thing is so versatile. I did a video just on this tarp and I'll point you to it, but it's fantastic. It's a sealed nylon tarp, so you don't want to get it around a fire. If a spark gets on it, it'll just melt right through it. And I'm going to make this my foot in. Now, I don't have it staked down. I need to do some work on the inside. I need to put some leaves. I'm going to put me a bed of leaves down there. And then I have one of these uh, sort of survival tarps that I'm going to put down there as a ground pad. It's got a reflective side. I'm going to turn it up. Then I've got an air mattress. And I'll use it and then my top quilt. See, I've got it staked to the ground. And these are the doors. I'm going to crawl in from this end, but let me take you up here at the head. And I'm going to make this my head end. I'll just step back a little bit where you can see it. The whole thing. Yeah, that's the front. That's what I'm calling front anyway. Up here at the head. I've got these doors sealed off. Let me take you around the back. This tarp has its own built-in ridge line. It just has these eyelets up here that you can hook off to. Let me show you the inside of this thing. Now I'm gonna put some leaves in here. I gotta go collect some. But I'm just gonna fill this thing up good with a bed of leaves. And then I'll put that tarp that I brought. I brought one of those survival tarps. It's just a little lightweight tarp that I can use. It's got a reflective side. I'll put it up 
and then on top of that I'll put my air mattress I have one of those big Agnes air mattresses that's rated like to 32 degrees it'll go down to freezing I used to use it tent camping and then I'm just gonna fill this thing up I got all kinds of room in here but I got it buttoned down to the ground I'll have a good spot. I'll be fine in here. It just won't be near as comfortable as my hammock. I don't sleep that well on the ground. My hips and back get a little bit sore. I have to sleep on my side. And that's why I got that big Agnes. I've tried different types of air mattresses when I used to tent camp a lot. And I had one of those thinner thermal rest air mattresses, but when you go to side sleep, it just pushes down in the ground. And so I got a big Agnes and it works better. Of course, it's a little bigger and heavier. Hang on. Don't leave me. I'll get this thing full of leaves and we'll look at it. Here's that survival tarp I was telling you about I'm going to use as a ground pad. It's, it's got a green side and it's got a reflective silver side. That's the side I'm going to put up so it'll reflect my heat back onto me. I've used it a couple of times. It won't take a lot of abuse, but it'll take, you have to kind of baby it a little bit, and it'll last. I'm going to use it to collect some leaves and bring over here. I'm going to cut me a rake so I can rake up some leaves with. You've seen this before in some of my other videos. I've demoed this Baco Laplander. I've had it for several years and it works pretty good. I got a good bed of leaves in it now. We're all set. All I have to do is put that tarp on top of it. Putting these leaves in here does two things for me. It gives me an insulation layer from the ground, plus it makes it softer. I'll put the silver side up. That'll reflect the heat back onto me. All I need to do now is put my air mattress in there, get my top quilt out, and I'm ready to go. I have a good shelter. Of course, this is not going to be nowhere near as comfortable as my hammock. I know that already. But I just wanted to practice my skills. I got Big Agnes ready. I'll let you see this. It's uh, it's a Big Agnes Air Core. I've had it for several years. I don't know if they make this particular one anymore. They probably do. But it's good down to freezing. It's supposed to protect you down to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got a pillow up there. That's just a uh, thermal rest pillow. This is my war bonnet top cover. It's a zero degree down top cover. Let me give you a 360 view of my campsite. We're at the peak of the fall colors. We had a dry season. It just didn't turn out that great this year. It's about mid-November. This is about the time of year that our leaves peak here in Alabama, or in the central part of Alabama where I am. I'm carrying a new pack today. I just got this a couple of days ago. It's a Duluth Rambler. It's a 32 liter pack and it's made out of a wax canvas. It's not waterproof, but it's water resistant. Let me take you around it. On the front, there's just a zipper pouch that you can put some gear that you want to get to quickly. On both sides, it has these two pouches, and these are perfect to put a canteen set. I've got my Pathfinder canteen set and stove in here. These are just roller buckles. It's the same on this side. 
This is just a bucket style pack. On the lid, it's got a zipper pouch that you can put maps and things like that in. And it's got this leather cinch strap. And you can put all kinds of gear in this thing. These front straps just attach with these roller buckles. They're leather straps. You can cinch down. This pack only has shoulder straps. It doesn't have a hip belt. And that's something I'll have to get used to. I'm not used to carrying a, a heavy pack just on my shoulders. And yesterday when I hiked in, I did have to stop one time to get my shoulders a rest. It's like a four mile hike to where I'm parked to get in here. This piece of hardware that I have attached to my shoulder strap is just my camera mount. It's called a Peak Design Capture if you're interested. It's just an easy way and fast access to your camera when you're backpacking. The wax canvas for this pack is not waterproof, but it's water resistant. And I don't think I'll put a pack cover over it. I'm just gonna leave it just like it is. It rained last night, and actually it's uh, raining a little bit right now. I don't know if you can tell it or not. It's just a light drizzle. But it, it's a little bit wet, and uh, I think it'll be fine. It didn't rain hard, though. It wasn't a downpouring rain. I have one of these trash compactor bags, and I do this in all my packs, and you've seen this before in some of my previous videos. But all the gear that I don't want to get wet, I just put in here. Now this is a trash compactor bag. It's not a regular garbage bag. These are stronger and they're stiffer. I was surprised about how much gear I could put in this thing. I didn't know if I could put everything in it when I purchased it. But I wanted to be able to do a two night camping trip, two to three nights, and I can. This pack will get all of my gear for two to three nights. And I brought, I even brought my bush pot and put it in here. And I had room in it and the flap went over it and there was room for some more gear. But I'll tell you, this thing can hold more gear than I can haul just on my shoulders. The Luth pack will do custom modifications. And one thing I see is that I may want them to put the padded shoulder straps on it like they have on their Bushcrafter pack. That's their biggest outdoor pack. And they have leather, it's still the webbing, cotton webbing but it's uh, leather around it and it's got padding on the back. And I may have them do that to this pack. I'll wait and see and try it a few times before I make that decision. I do like the fact that I could carry my belt pouch and my belt knife with this pack. I don't have to put these things inside of it. That's because it doesn't have a hip belt. You can't hardly carry these items with you or on you when you have a hip belt on your pack. And I like that about this pack. That's one big advantage that I like. And the other thing that I like about it is it's real easy to take on and off. It doesn't have any kind of sternum strap on it. And it's real easy just to take it off and put it back on. Whereas when I'm all buttoned up with my hip belt and my sternum strap, I usually don't want to take my pack off at all. I'll avoid it. I guess the only concern I have about this pack now is that just being the shoulder straps, I don't know if I can carry all the weight I need to carry probably about 40 pounds at a maximum. And that, I don't know. I'll have to work with that to see if I can do it. I'll have to practice with it and go on a few trips with some weight, some short trips where I don't have to hike much. Like yesterday's hike was only like four miles. That's not too bad. And like I said, my shoulders did get sore and I had to drop it at one time and take, take a break. But I'll just have to work into it get in shape that's all but other than that I really like this pack so far now of course I've only this is my first trip with it so I can't really give you an opinion on if it's gonna be a great pack for you to go out and spend this much money on these things aren't aren't cheap this is uh, 300 and like I think this pack cost me three hundred twenty five dollars with a wax canvas so they're not cheap and I'm not telling you to go out and buy one. You'll just have to research it yourself if you like this style pack, which I do like this style pack. I like the bucket style pack. I like the pockets. I especially like these side pockets. It's perfect for my canteen set. I can get my alcohol stove and mug on one side, and then I can get my full canteen set and the cup that goes with it and the stove on this other side. So I got my whole cook kit in there and my fuel. I can carry my uh, alcohol stove fuel in here. I like the front pouch. It's easy to get to. You can put quick 
quick access items in there if I wanted to get to my gloves or my carabiner and this cordage that I tie my pack to a tree I put in here so I can just get to it. But it got all my gear up here for two days and I, li I like it so far. Only time will tell. We'll have to check it out some more. But I'll be carrying this pack. You'll be seeing it more in some of my videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to me, hit that bell so you'll get notified on my next video. Thank you for watching.